At one time, Bungie used to make some of the most incredible weapons. Now, I'm not saying that the weapons that we have now aren't incredible, but they definitely are lacking in the creative department. You see, Bungie used to be bold when it came to perks on certain weapons, having things like Kill Clip and Rampage roll together, having primaries that could roll with things like box breathing, exotics that brought about different mechanics that we have never seen before. You see, guys, to this day, the best expansion in terms of weapons was actually actually the expansion Black Armory. This was right after Forsaken and this expansion did what it said it was going to do. It was going to bring us amazing weapons and that it did. Today guys we're going to be going through a number of weapons that showed up and showed out both legendary and exotics inside of Destiny 2 that I feel like should be the benchmark. And the only reason why I even was okay with sunsetting and not even okay just somewhat accepted it was because I thought we would get back to this point that weapons would be as lethal as they were in Black Armory and believe me guys, they were. First on the list, no better weapon to start this off with than of course Kindled Orchid. Ah yes, a very nice 140 round per minute hand cannon that has just recently been sunset but my god did it have everything you would want on it. But the most standout thing about this hand cannon was the combination on the curated roll, Kill Clip and Rampage together. Oh! This weapon had it all, baby. Bungie decided to get crazy, allowing us to have two of the best damage dealing perks roll together. Oh, but don't worry guys, this list gets even better. Next on the list, a weapon that we reviewed a few months ago at the height of the auto rifle meta, Gilliard 42. To say this weapon was S tier is an understatement. We've talked about the Holy Trinity in the past before and Gilliard satisfied all of those. Rangefinder, dynamic sway reduction, and zoom modified scopes. You see the weapons that we have now, at least in the auto rifle department, may have two of the three, but none of them have three of the three, except for Gilliard. And considering it's one of the best filling auto rifles in the game, I deemed it the best auto rifle inside of Destiny 2. Now granted, at the time, no one really saw the value in Gilliard, not even myself. And it wasn't until you actually saw the 600 round per minute auto rifle buff that we got to actually see how nasty this weapon actually is. Next on the list, we gotta bring it up. It's a weapon many people hate, but by God, is it so fun to use and super creative on Bungie's part. And that is the fusion rifle, Yon. Yon is a hip fire fusion rifle with tracking, which yes, most players raged about, but it's actually not too terribly difficult to counter, especially in this sandbox with things like stasis, where everything pretty much has a lot more mobility. But back in the day when everyone was just kind of more or less running around without anything like Icarus Dash, the only thing that was really that mobile was just the hunter class in general. Yon would actually catch a lot of guardians with the pants down. Hands down, though this is one of the most creative and sexiest looking weapons in the game and even though i find that there is a lot of other exotics i would still choose over yon yon is one that i definitely identify strongly with whenever i think of black armory speaking of an exotic that we identify strongly with when we think of black armory is none other than izanagi's burden ah oh, y'all remember the quest for this one lengthy confusing but so so worth it a sniper rifle that merges four bullets into one for nasty damage and by god has it been a nasty weapon. Even now, it's still nasty. Although it has been nerfed in the reload department, I still like to use Izanagi's and Grandmaster content, especially when you combine it with things like Divinity. But even on its own, Izanagi is still a force to be reckoned with. And inside of Black Armory, this was an exotic that blew us away. Now, similar to Gilliard, I didn't really know how good Izanagi's burden actually was at the top. But heading into Shadow Keep, this became a sniper rifle that I constantly had on me at all times inside of PvE. Next on the list, we've talked about Kindle Orchid, we've talked about Gilliard, but another legendary weapon that changed the game was Ringing Nail. Now I had multiple combos, but I never landed the God Rope combo. And that combo was both Rampage and Dragonfly together. You see how bold Bungie was at one time when it came to perk combos? They were. At one time, Bungie would do crazy stuff like this. And this is what set these weapons apart from others. Rampage, Dragonfly, AoE damage increase with each stack of Rampage, oh my god! Not only that, if you wanted to take the other approach, I actually have a Shield Disorient plus Disruption Break Roll. There were so many things you could do here with Ring and Nail, and such an underrated auto rifle. And honestly, this is the kind of perk combos that should be the benchmark for primary weapons inside of Destiny 2. This is what we need to get back to, which takes us to our next weapon that again, another primary that set itself apart, the Scout Rifle No Feelings. No Feelings was a 
180 round per minute scout rifle that many people looked at and just thought, all right, it's a scout rifle. And especially at that time, no one really cared about scouts. The beautiful thing about No Feelings was that it came with the perk box breathing, which to this date has been the only primary weapon with that legendary trait. But essentially aiming the weapon for a short period will grant you increased range as well as precision damage. It does reset though after firing. So essentially the weapon's damage would drop back off to its normal default damage, but it did enough damage with box breathing to enable this 180 scout rifle to three tap. Box breathing has since been sunset. You can of course still use it inside of regular crucible, but I find myself just dreaming about the possibilities of this scout rifle inside of something like Trials. The ability to kill guardians in 0.67 seconds. You see, this was a time frame when Bungie was bold. Like so many weapons these days, we just get in there just like, ah, here's this base generic roll you done seen a million times. That's the thing about these primary weapons back in Black Armory. Bungie was willing to take risk and they did it by allowing us to have box breathing on a primary weapon of all things. Which takes us to our next weapon on the list. Another exotic that came in Black Armory, La Monarch. This was an exotic bow. And even though bows had just come out in Forsaken, there still wasn't that many people using them. Even with things like Wishender about, a lot of people just didn't like the way bows felt. They felt kind of sluggish, especially things like Wishender. La Monarch changed the game though. It was snappy, it felt good. Not only did it feel good though, it was lethal as hell. And that was because the weapon would apply poison damage. This exotic combined with a couple of other things, if you boosting it could run around one shotting inside of crucible but even outside of that this was a great exotic inside of pve the spreading of that poison damage the fact that it was void combining it with certain things like nezirak sin and with the possibility of a corruption based subclass coming in the future i really think something like love Monarch is only going to get better the main thing is though as with all the other weapons we just mentioned bungie took risks when it came to the creativity and what they allow these weapons to have on them which takes us to another legendary weapon to Tara's Gaze. Ah, yes. Maybe not the best feeling sniper rifle in the game, but it made up with it by simply just having Kill Clip on it. By simply having Kill Clip on this aggressive sniper, though, upon landing a kill and reloading, to Tara's Gaze can one-shot body shot. And it really blows my mind how crazy Bungie got back then when it came to perks on certain weapons. But I loved it, though, because despite these weapons being as good as they were, there were still other fantastic pinnacle-level weapons, which just drove this demand of making sure that other randomly rolled weapons could match that lethality. Tatara's gaze with kill clip added another level of play there, especially inside of Crucible. Securing the kill, snagging the reload, and then following up with a one-shot body shot would catch anyone off guard. Now the next legendary on the list, this one was an unusual one because we just didn't have many of these type of weapons, and that was actually the aggressive pulse rifle blast furnace. Now this weapon did a lot of things that other aggressive didn't do at the time. We didn't have things like Sacred Providence yet, but the thing that set Blast Furnace apart from things like Go Figures and others is number one, its weapon rolls were disgusting. Look at that. Feeding Frenzy, Kill Clip, all day, baby. If you want to go Outlaw, sure, go right ahead. But probably the thing that really drove me to play with this aggressive pulse rifle over others was Zen Moment. Zen Moment in combination with any of these traits was so much better to have inside of PvP. Considering that aggressive burst weapons are four round burst weapons, they had a little more hop. They were a little less controllable and having something like Zim Moment there to level out that stability by causing damage was really, really nice. But as a cherry on top, let me just say that Black Armory scopes were the best, baby. I thought they were the cleanest, sexiest looking scopes and the sexiest one out of all of them was the Rasmussen short zoom scope. Didn't add a lot to zoom, but that was all right. It increased that handling substantially and it was one of the cleanest ones to look out of. There were still some other good ones. The Marin was pretty good, whether it was the RDL or even the RDS. Both of those I very much enjoyed, but that Rasmussen for that mid to short range game with this aggressive pulse was disgusting. Everything was on this pulse from being super lethal, for being super consistent. Bungie, you did it right the first time, man. Are you hearing me, guys? Black Armory has got to be the benchmark, which takes us to a sword. Oh uh, yes, a sword that we quite literally broke the game with at least for a month until it got patched. And that is of course, Strikers Sure Hand. Now at the time we did not have have, at least I don't believe any sword that could roll with surrounded. But there was a couple of other shenanigans we did. Things like the no ammo combo for striker sure hand. Essentially guys, things like biotic enhancements with surrounded and no ammo would actually give you more damage per sword swing than swinging the sword itself. It's kind of nuts. Although not intentional on Bungie's part. Regardless though, striker sure hand still set itself apart from other swords, both in its perk
perks and in the sexy department as that is one sexy sword baby that's a templar weapon look at that which takes us to the final weapon on this list although one of the nastiest weapons to go against and that is actually the machine gun hammerhead hammerhead sounded as deadly as it was and th that's the thing here inside of destiny 2 you ever shot a gun you're like okay that sounds like a pea shooter but it's pretty good or the opposite you might have a gun that sounds great that sounds like a weapon sounds like the kind of thing you want to bring to a gunfight but it's actually quite poopy hammerhead though oh that weapon struck fear in men's eyes struck fear in mine inside of pvp somebody rocking the right roll whether it's rampage tap the trigger or some other variation i would run that weapon was going to put me down fast and it had a number of rolls inside of pve that made it a monster as well now granted it kind of got dethroned because of 21 percent delirium but now they're both dethroned because they're both sunset you know what i mean regardless though the point i'm trying to make with all these weapons is that this this is it like i, I don't know who at bungie made these guns or who thought of putting box breathing on a scout rifle who thought about combining rampage and dragonfly together who gave us the combination of kill clip rampage which yes i know it's on transfiguration we're gonna re-review it regardless though whoever these group of individuals were they were bold they were up in the ante when it came to giving us lethal weapons and even though at the time we had very very powerful pinnacle weapons we still had randomly rolled weapons that we sought after in that expansion a final weapon on the list that was actually the raid exotic that to this day is still in my opinion the best pve weapon in the game is anarchy how wrong can you go with anarchy no matter what content you're in whether it's raids grandmaster nightfalls or just messing around anarchy is an exotic that will carry you beautifully this is the level of lethality that i think bungie needs to get back to and to be perfectly honest i, I feel like our exotics are matching that lethality considering how strong weapons are even in beyond lights things like lament and cloud strike even eyes of tomorrow despite it being kind of bugged when it comes to doing boss damage those weapons are very very strong and i'm glad to have them at the same time though legendary weapons need to return back to this format need to return to that same level of nasty as they were in black armory so bungie if you're watching this yo single out whoever the hell that is that made these weapons man like for real and literally just hand them the legendary weapons for the rest of destiny 2 and let them do their thing so guys let me know in the comments below what you think feeling kind of nostalgic man black armory again one of my favorite expansions one of the best bungees ever done i loved forges especially day one forges when they were super difficult i loved the weapons that came with it both the exotics and the legendaries and even the lore surrounding black armory was amazing fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right